welcome back. I'm going again with the Smoky Mountains. That one that I did just before this one was more of a rocky river than a Smoky Mountain. So I'm going again. I've added another white, as you can see, because last time I had two whites, now I've got three. One, two, three. I've also added this kind of a smoky blue. So it's a little bit different to my navy, as you can see. So I'm hoping that that one will work well. So I added an extra white and added that smoky blue. The others are the same. <clears throat> um, I'm going to start with putting my treadmill silicone in. <clears throat> Excuse me. 60 grams of pouring medium, 60 grams of paint. Uh, that's one... 20 which is four ounces so four drops one drop per 30 grams or one ounce one two three four i'm not going to do the white one two three four and don't squeeze these bottles all you've got to do is just tip them over and the oil just runs out if you squeeze them you're going to have probably about 30 drops so don't squeeze them and don't pull the caps off the top it's just a twist on off like that so be careful when you get it. I've seen some people pull the actual nozzle straight off and then tip and of course you get just a huge amount of oil and that just won't work. More is not better when it comes to oil. You just want enough to be able to bring up your cells and stir it really, really well. Otherwise you're going to get like big worms. Because if you get a drop of silicone and it stretches, it's going to turn into this big wormy looking thing. So try to stri um, stir it in really, really well. Because it's your heat gun that's going to bring the oil up to the surface. And then it's your stretching that's going to make the cells grow. It's not how much you stir your oil in at all. I guess if you don't stir it, yes, you will get big blobs of silicone, but they're not necessarily going to be cells. They're just going to be big blobs of silicone that doesn't look very nice. It'll just be all blobby and wormy. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to get going because it's a big canvas and I'll talk to you about my pouring medium as I go. Um, what I was going to do actually is change the order that I do these. I'm going to put white in the bottom of three of them and navy in the bottom of that one and then the smoky one in the top of that one. I may have to just actually do them one at a time because I'm not going to remember what I'm up to so I'll just do that. So I've got this lovely navy as I said. These are all Montmartre paints. Studio Acrylics. Um, that's the white. That's what it looks like. Montmartre Studio Acrylic. Most of these colours I have made up myself because what we can get in Australia is pretty limited colour-wise. So I have made the navy, I've made the charcoal, I've made the smoky blue. And I've also made the light blue. So the only thing I haven't made is the white and the burnt umber. Hmm. So I've put the smoky blue in between the two whites. And then the brown is in between the two whites as well. Because I'll start with the white on that one. But I'm going to do this one next. So this one will be that next and then I'm going to skip the charcoal I found that the charcoal next to the blue the light blue wasn't all that attractive but I'm not sure how it's going to go next to this mm, I don't think that'll work because they're too dark I'm going to have to just put a little little layer of white there a little barrier layer and then do that. I wonder if that'll be right next to the brown. No, see, they're too dark. You can't put a dark colour next to a dark colour. Otherwise, you know, your cell might be blue, navy blue, and then the ring around it's going to be chocolate. And they're too close together. You, you won't even notice them. So this one I'm going to start from here. I'm going to layer in the same order, but start from here. 
<clears throat> just continue on like so. My pouring medium is my usual, 60% glue, 40% water. Uh, the glue is the Elmer's Glue All. You can use school glue, but you might have to thicken your mix up a little bit. So you might have to go 70-30 with the glue and water. I do find that the school glue is a little bit different in consistency. Okay, so that's, that's had one layer. Um, and then this one, I'll just do that. And then start from the white here. Just trying to make them a little bit different so that each time I flip the cup they're not going to be identical and maybe I can get some different sort of um, colours and some different patterns and just different shading in, throughout the painting rather than it all being exactly the same and hopefully different cells as well because the colours are in different areas. Mm, no, I'll miss you because you've already got the blue in you. Let's go the white. And then the charcoal. That'll do. Um, and then this one we'll start with down here. I don't even know what, what's got one layer and what's got two layers. I'm just going to keep layering until... I ran out of paint, so I don't know if they're all going to be have the same amount of layers in them. I'm just going to keep going until I run out of paint. <clears throat> had a busy day today. Uh, as I said in the previous video, we're still just finishing off our granny flat under the house. So I've had the electrician there and he's finished now. He's got the, the kitchens in, the cabinets are in, the stone benches are going in on Monday. Today's Friday. <laughs> you might you probably won't see this video until a few days, but today's Friday. And my daughter Christy's coming up tonight after work. And, oh, there's another movie we're going to go and see, another scary movie, because you know how I like the scary movies. So wait till she comes up. She comes up every third weekend, and uh, then we go and see a scary movie. Now, what was in that charcoal? So, the new Stephen King movies come out, um, Doctor Sleep, I think it's called. Yep. So, we're going to go and check that out. And then, um, oh, I made, I did a video earlier today, the, the previous one, to this one, the smaller one. Because when I have a day off, I usually do two or three videos, but then I only upload one a day, so you might not see them until a few days later. Um, and I've just made the cheesecake. I'm going out for dinner with friends tomorrow night to their place, and I said, I'll bring dessert. So I've made a, a white chocolate raspberry cheesecake. So that's in the fridge setting. Let's put a little bit of, actually I wonder what the blue that looks next to the, um, the brown, that would look alright, wouldn't it? Running out of paint. I think you'll probably do. You can have a little bit of this light blue on you. I think that's going to be the end of the light blue. Oh, and then I had the people come up to see my puppies and my dogs, I should say, my adult dogs. They've flown in from New South Wales. Um, they brought their adult son with them. He's autistic. She didn't tell me she had an autistic son, but he kept on saying, get off, get off, get off to the dogs. So I, I don't know how that's going to go. Not sure if he's used to dogs, especially little tiny dogs. So I don't know that that's going to work too well with my tiny babies. 
So I'll have to have a think about that. They're very delicate little <laughs> animals. Um, let's put a little bit of navy on there. I'm just not sure whether he's been brought up around dogs. I didn't. I didn't really ask. <clears throat> and of course, it means that I have to put the puppy on a plane, and they live two and a half hours from the airport. So. Apart from having a really long day with the flight, then there's a really long drive afterwards. Nah, I just don't think it's going to, don't think it's going to work for that particular family. Maybe they can get maybe a bigger dog closer to home. I think would probably be more suitable. I am very very fussy about where my babies go. One lady emailed me and she says, oh, I want a puppy, a teacup puppy for my daughter for her birthday. And I said, how old's your daughter? And she says, she's three. So, mm, no, <laughs> sorry, but I'm not selling a teacup poodle to a family with a three-year-old. That's just not safe. It's, it's really not. Those little dogs are so delicate. You know, they jump off a couch, it's too high and they'll break a leg. Um, they get stood on, they, you know, they follow you, they're so close behind you. I've had people slamming doors on them, not my particular dogs, but they've lost their dog because, you know, they didn't realise the dog was behind them and slammed the door on them and oh, all these horrific stories. So I'm just really, really, I guess, overprotective of them and I'm just really careful about where they go. So, but yeah, you know, I've been there at their conception and their birth and I've raised them for eight weeks and uh, ten weeks I should say I, I don't let them go before they're ten weeks so oh yeah they like my babies I'm very protective of them and of course I want them to go to the the best home possible let's finish off with a little bit of white there so anyway that's the poodle story It's the end of the white. There's a little bit of lumps in the bottom of my cups because I'm using the same cups that I used this morning. So I did cover them, but later on in the day, and it's very hot today, and I've started going a little bit dry. You know how they go a bit crusty on the outside of the, on the inside of the cup, further up the cup, and they go a bit crusty, and you've got to be careful that you don't scrape those lumps off. See, there's lumps at the top there. So, yeah, you've got to cover them or um, use them up straight away. A little bit of this. Oops, I forgot to turn my notifications off again. Might have to pause the video and just turn them off and then start again because I know it's annoying for you guys to hear ding. All right, that's all of them done. I'm just going to flip them over and then I'll go and pause the video. It's been a long time since I've done a five flip cup pull. Very long time. I've been doing smaller ones. All right, let me just fix this for you. Okay, all done. No more disruptions. Get the gloves back on. I can get them on. Okay, I've got my corner capture ready to go. Oh, I've got my torch ready to go. It's nearly empty actually, this one. She is pretty much empty. These just clip off like that. I'll just change that. Um, but I'll use, um, I'll use another one for now because the first time I, I use a fresh can, I get flame. So I'm going to walk around the studio going around with the flame catcher, flame thrower, I should say, <clears throat> until it kind of eases down. Right, oh, let's do this. Hopefully we'll get a lovely variation of colours because I've mixed and matched a bit. Are we ready? Let's do this. Thank <laughs> you. 
try not to get those blobby bits on the bottom. Try. That one's got a lot of brown, hasn't it? Yeah, that didn't work. See the blobby bits there? I'm going to go faster, I think. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's very nice. Lovely variation of colours. Very pretty. up. The studio's full of flies. I don't know why. I don't know where they're coming from. It's just I've killed about 10 flies today. Oh, I've got cells already. It's a good sign. Now these are the areas that have got the most area to cover. So I'm going to tilt that way first. Cloths ready. Oh, this is this one looks really exciting, you guys. Hopefully, it's going to be pretty. So, as you know, I don't want to lose too much paint off the surface just yet, but I need need to fill these in. So, I'm going to lose paint there. So, let's catch that while I try and cover these triangles. And again, back and forth while I'm aiming towards you so that I can try not to lose too much paint. Just wet that and help it over. Mm. Okay, I did lose a bit there. That's just going to have to do. I can tilt the rest of those blobs over later on. How much did I lose? Oh. Enough. I didn't want to lose that much. It's always tricky when you've got like a big triangle of area that you need to cover. Now I'm going to just do that side and that side and then I'm going to torch. So just over there. Bring the weight of the paint back to the middle. Go away fly. Take it down there. Come back. All right. So my sides covered. One edge is covered. Now I'm going to torch. That way, all I have to do is stretch, you know, about an inch. That way, these cells will then grow. The ones that I'm torching are the ones that I get from torching, I should say. torching because I really need to concentrate on what I'm doing in a couple of areas actually never mind it is what it is I don't know why I got so close 
Who knows? Done this enough times to know better. <laughs> okay, let's go. Walk the paint back and forth. Plenty of paint on the surface, so I can easily move it around. Let's just have a look. Okay, those colours are divine. Love those. It's not quite as bright blue as the first one, which is very nice. Just a real shame I've got that colony there I'm touching too close now I do need to get back and get rid of these blobs here so let's try that and I'm just going to torch up here where it's a little bit empty because I've gone over that side and stretched the cells so there's not much there so I need to just put a few there and then when I go back that way they can stretch out so I need to get rid of those blobs there and maybe a little bit of that busyness there it's always always a bit tricky taking the weight of the paint all the way back down because you do risk you know over stretching things but it kind of has to be done but just over to get rid of those. And when you come back, zigzag back again as well. Don't just go straight back. Okay, well that got rid of those blobs down there. Opened up my colony. My colony actually looks a bit better now. That is really, really pretty, you guys. Love it. Oh my gosh. I know it's got a little bit of the colony there that I wasn't happy with, but hey, what can you do? Tis what it is. There's a little blob there of grey. I'm just going to put a little bit of blue in the centre there just to kind of disguise it just a touch. didn't work <laughs> I just brought it back up again let's put a little blob of blue in it probably shouldn't touch the surface I should just let it blob on its own there we go it just this sort of breaks up that blob I guess um, now, um, what I'm looking at is these cells here are really quite small. These ones here are really quite big. So now I have to decide whether I want to bring this down, which means opening these up um, and to kind of match that side. But you have to decide whether or not it's worth it, whether or not you can actually get the cells the weight of the paint all the way back down there again. I'm just going to torch in here, just where there's a little bit of blank area again. I just want some big cells, some little cells, because it's quite a busy painting and there's lots of little ones here. I just want to, you know, put a few more little ones here and there. I'm just going to see how far I can stretch these guys out. If I can. And there goes a little blobby bit there. Come back. Make sure you zigzag all the way back. Okay, so that 
stretch them out a little bit. Okay, I just wanted something in that dark area there. And luckily I'm getting some white cells up through that, so that was good. It's just a bit dark in there. So um, yeah, that will do. Now when I look at my cells, these ones aren't that much bigger than these ones. There's a few in there that are smaller, but that's okay. I've got big and small everywhere. That's still quite busy, but it kind of balances out the busyness over here because this area here is quite busy. That comes in on the side, that comes in on the side, that balances that. I've got that beautiful dark blue through the center. So then my eyes drawn to the center. Got those on the side. I've got some brown there. Love it. Just love it. Gorgeous. Happy with this one. Just fix up my corners. Now, do you want to see the previous one from this morning? If I get it out and show you. trying to find some corresponding colours. That didn't work. I need more of a blue. No, that's better. Blue with a little bit of white in it. I'm going to run that down gently because last time I missed and I scratched the side, didn't I? <laughs> oh dear. Oops, I think I knocked the tripod with my foot just then. Imagine if the tripod fell down into my painting. I'd cry. I actually don't have problems with my painting, touch wood. Um, they dry perfectly, like from where you see them now. They don't change, they just dry exactly the same. They don't crack, they don't split, they don't do anything. They shouldn't do, they're very well behaved paintings, I must say. Aren't you? Yes, you're very well behaved. Okay. <clears throat> no, just leave it, woman. Just leave it, walk away. I was looking at these and going, oh, look how small they are. Maybe I should stretch them, but no. Just walk away. If you start stretching more now, you're going to lose the roundness of your cells. They're going to all go kind of... Um, rectangle and elongated you know if you start stretching them um, I do really love this I just I don't love 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 it I just love it only because of this cluster here that really bothers me that how busy that is so I probably will go again because you know me I'm a bit OCD I want to do something again and again and again and again until I get it right and then I can stop and I can move on to something else. That's just how I am. I do that with my painting, I do that with my baking. Um, and I keep doing, making a cake or whatever until I get it right. And I go, yeah, I've done it and I move on. Okay, so that's the previous one this morning. Not quite as busy. If I didn't over torch, it would be like this one. That's it there. This is if a fly has gone into it. Great. Okay. Let's take you down for a close up. Does this one look more like. Um, what did I call it? Smoky Mountains? Does it look more like Smoky Mountains? I think it does. I think that um, smoky blue has really helped. With the smokiness of it. Look at that bit of navy through the center there. Okay, let's see if I can show you the whole thing very quickly. It's a big one. Okay, so obviously some areas I don't particularly like, most of them I do. These cells are just to die for. We've got the gray cells, we've got the white cells. And because I mixed up my cups, they're all different. There's that 
busy section where I over torched. See how the cells have all come up in like a cluster? They don't have space around them. I don't like that. I like the cells to be more like that where you can see space around them. I think that's much more attractive. But, you know, it happened. And uh, you just got to live with it, don't you? But when you do torch, just be really, really careful. Take your time. Go from up high. Go around once. Come back again. A little bit closer, maybe. Still nothing. Go around again. A little bit closer this time again. Until you start seeing little tiny cells appear. And then you know you're at the right height. And don't go over and over one section. Just torch it. Love that. And then, uh, yeah, just wait for the cells to come up. So there she is. She looks like Smoky Mountains. <laughs> I think so. I think she's better than the first one. Just that um, smoky, inky blue has really helped. Now, do you like the light blue in there or not? I guess it needs a little bit of lightness, doesn't it? Just for, for a pop. You need your pop colour. So there, yeah, really happy with it. Um, and I would, I would like to do it again and just try for a better result because of those clusters of cells. I know I can do better, so I will. I'll try again. <laughs> All right, and bring you guys round for the ride. Okay, hope you've enjoyed that one. And I will definitely see you for the next one. Bye for now.